This is video one in a series of me making a plugin inside of the Obsidian app. Now, I know very little about code. I know what GitHub is, and that's about it. And most of the code language goes way over my head. So this series is <laughs> very beginners. So if you understand code, please let me know in the comment section below what I do wrong or any easier or quicker way of finding a solution to things that I'm doing. If you're following along and want to do something similar, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing. So the first thing I did is I downloaded Git. I literally went to the Git website, which is typing Git in Google, come to here and then download whatever the most recent version is. I then downloaded GitHub Desktop because the command line confuses me, it frustrates me, I don't understand it and it goes way over my head so I'm using this because it gives me buttons to push instead. I then downloaded Node.js because the Obsidian app uses JS, so JavaScript, and I need Node.js to use it, I think my current understanding, but yeah, I downloaded it. I downloaded VS Code a while ago, but you can download the most recent build if you want to follow along. You can use something else, but I, I don't really know of anything else. And most tutorials use VS Code, so that's what I'm using. And I have a GitHub with a couple of repositories because I've been playing around before. I don't really, I, I had people tell me how to do this because I don't know how to do it, but I'm figuring it out myself now. And of course, if you want to develop uh, an Obsidian plugin, you need to actually have Obsidian downloaded. So download Obsidian as well. The first thing I want to do, because I know how to do it and it's easy, is make an Obsidian vault. I want to actually have something that I can play in. So I'm going to make a folder inside of this is just an empty uh, external hard drive. So I'm going to make a folder. New plugin vault. Now, when I open up Obsidian, I've got some other vaults that I've opened up before, but I'm going to open up folder as vault. Select the new folder vault, so you can see I'm in the external hard drive, I just double click, new folder vault, and then select. Keeps throwing things up on my other screen, but you can see I've got the vault open, it's the new plugin vault, and when I double click into the folder we have a .obsidian folder, and that's the configuration folder. Inside of there you have all of the app information. Because I'm developing a plugin, obviously I need to turn on plugins, so we go to community plugins and then turn on community plugins because I am making a community plugin, not a, a core plugin, which is exciting but also scary. You can either manually make the folder or you can just download a community plugin and it makes a folder for you. So if I go to the advanced tables and install, it's going to show you exactly where the community plugins go. Now when I go into my documents, I go into my .obsidian folder, you can see there is now a plugins folder and that is where the table editor obsidian folder is, which is actually the advanced tables plugin you can see I've just installed there. So when I double click, there's the main JS JavaScript file, the manuscript JSON file and the styles CSS cascading style sheet document file. So I know my plugin is going to be living in this folder. Git is version control, which basically means every time you make a change, so add a letter, take a letter, add a file or folder, anything like that, it tracks it. So it knows what's happened and it keeps the history log. As long as there is a .git folder inside of whatever folder you're editing. I could try explaining this, but loads of other videos do it better, so I'm just going to push the buttons that I would normally push. So to add a .git folder into your system, you can go into the terminal and add stuff in there but what I do is I go to file new repository and a repository is essentially just a folder to, to you and me it's just a folder it probably means more to people that understand code but it's just a folder I'm going to call it new plugin now I'm going to select my new plugin vault obsidian plugins and I'm just going to leave it there so it's creating a folder in plugins so what it's going to do is making a new folder repository called plugins that's going to have a dot git folder thing inside of it that tracks the history and I'm going to initialize this repository with a readme and a readme is just a file an md file markdown file that tells you what the thing is basically uh, so create repository or folder same difference and now when I go into my document you can see new plugin folder repository same thing Double click, there's the dot git, it's hidden. And on Windows, when I go to the view tab, I can click hidden items. So if I untick that, the dot git disappears and now it's reappeared so I can see it. But this is basically where the history happens. At this point, I'm going to assume you've gone through the beginner tutorial of pushing the buttons in the GitHub desktop. And you'll notice that we've got this come up again and it says publish your repository to GitHub. So the repository at the moment is local. It's on my computer. It's not on GitHub. So I need to push it or send it, upload it to GitHub. If I go to file, 
options and then my accounts you can see i've actually linked my github account to my github desktop app and that means when i push publish repository it's going to push my local repository the new plugin folder to my github my online github repository I'm going to keep the name the same and I'm actually going to make this one public so you can see exactly what I'm doing as I go through this project. Publish repository. Now it hasn't appeared here straight away because just like any other online page you need to refresh the page so I'm going to refresh the page it's currently four now it's a five. There's the new plugin it updated 22 seconds ago. If I push the pencil inside of the readme it actually takes me to the file so I can edit the file. I am coding and then when I push commit changes that basically saves the changes. Now when I go to my desktop app you can see I'm currently in the new plugin repository and there hasn't been any changes but I've made a change on github. So what I need to do is see if there has been a change so I need to fetch any information so click the fetch button and it says there's been one commit from the origin remote remote being github because it's a remote repository and i want to pull it so i want to bring the change that happened elsewhere into my local repository and now when i push on history you can see that's the initial commit that's the first thing i did i just made that and then this is the one that i made a minute ago because i added i am coding so now i have a remote repository in github a local repository in my folder but i need to actually develop the plugin so add Cody files to stuff uh, so i'm going to open up vs code and now i actually need to open up a folder for files to actually edit and we've already made that folder because it's the local repository that we made so file open folder yes you could have clicked the shortcuts but i didn't bother uh, and then the new plugin vault dot obsidian plugins new plugin and i'm just going to open up that folder yes i trust the author i trust myself and you can see we've got the same two files from the github repo because it's the same folder i am coding i am smart uh, and you can see there's got the plus one because i've made a change there's also a dot next to the file which also signifies a change so Control s just like every other app to save it but that only saved the change in this sort of working view it didn't commit or push or do any of that cody stuff yet which is why the one has turned up in the source controls and what VS Code is telling me is I made a change in the readme file, but I haven't done anything to it. I've just made a change. So if I push plus, it stages it, which basically says, hey, you've made a change and you, you actually want to tell other things, i.e. the local repository and the remote repository that you've done something. I'm going to label the change so I know exactly what I did in the change. And then I'm going to commit the change which basically says yes you've made a change and saved it and now i want to sync the changes to the remote repository because at the moment it's just all local so in theory if i've done this right inside of my github desktop it's going to have a history saying i've added this and that will also have been pushed to my remote repository inside of github because i synced it so in my local github desktop app you can see there is the smart commit message change i go in there and it's there we go we've added a blank line and we've also added i am smart and if we go to the new plugin page it says oh look smart so it hasn't added another file because there's no other file but it's changed the most recent commit to smart and you can see i am smart is there and it says a minute ago because it was like a whole minute ago now now unfortunately you can't make an app by just writing it out in an md file because that would make life way too easy instead you need loads of different types of files and different languages and make it really complicated so we're going to try and do that this is a really helpful repository that's been created by someone from the obsidian community which gives you a sample plugin and there are loads of files in here a lot of these files i don't know what they are i don't know what they do and i don't know why i need them yet so you'll learn that with me in this series now you can use this template but it does some of the things that i've just shown you automatically so you don't actually know how to do it i i did this to start with and then i got confused when i had to make it myself so i was like how do i do this thing which is why i shared it in the video but for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to copy some of the files from here just to make life easier on me so going back to vs code we need to add a main ts file so main.ts the reason it's ts is because typescript is the language that's used by most of the developers instead of javascript but javascript is what obsidian reads so we need to turn the typescript file into a javascript file which is done automatically and i'll do that later i then need a styles file 
style.css, and a manifest JSON. And the reason I know I need those three files is because when I go into here, you can see a main JS, a manifest JSON, and a styles cascading. So each plugin has one of these three files, which means I need those files at least. Now, because we've made changes, you can see the source control is giving me a number three. So if I come in here, you see, oh, there's the three changes. So if we go file, uh, we stage those changes and then commit sync changes. So that's pushing it to the remote repository as well. Now, if I refresh my GitHub page, it's then going to have the main.ts, the manifest and the styles. And it, it looks like I'm doing work and actually I'm, I'm just making files. <laughs> I'm not actually writing any code. And while I'm here, I know this makes me look like a really good coder because I'm doing loads of stuff, but this has nothing to do with code. It's all the Obsidian Git plugin. So every time I make a change inside of my Obsidian, it pushes the change to my private GitHub repo. So it looks like I'm doing loads of code. In actual fact, I'm just doing loads of work inside of my Obsidian. So I guess you could say I'm writing code if you count writing an Obsidian code. Now I'm going to do what I think every developer does, which is just copy someone else's code. So I'm going to go into the main TS file and you see, oh, look, that's really fancy code. I really like that. I'm just going to um, take it. So copy, paste, copy, paste, save those changes. But now I need a JavaScript file for the plugin to actually work. And this is where I believe the node.js stuff gets involved because you need to transfer something from TypeScript to JavaScript. So Open up terminal, new terminal. I know I don't really like this much either, but I don't know any other way of doing it yet. NPM, I think, is addressing the node packet and then install because we need to install all the JS, so JavaScript modules stuff. And this is when the first error appeared, which is why when using the template, it was great because you didn't come up with any of these errors. But because I didn't know these errors existed from using the template, I got confused when I tried to make it myself. So this is looking for a package.json file. So add new file, package.json. Why it has automatically made the lock.json, I don't know. It's just there. Now, when I go back to the uh, template vault, I can go package.json. I'm just going to copy and paste what's in here because, again, I don't really know what's going on. Now, when I push npm install, it works fine and installs what I know it needs to install. And from my limited understanding, what this has done is just installed this folder with all the files and stuff inside of it, which looks quite extensive. But it's done this by configuring or building in some way JavaScript, TypeScript, Something like that, but I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below and I'll probably pin your comment because, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. Now that I've installed stuff, uh, I want to run the build. So npm run build. Again, I'm just following the instructions here. And to be completely honest with you, now I'm just going to copy and paste some of the information from these files until things work the way that they do when you use this template. I can't understand why. I don't see any documentation online anywhere that explains why you need this file. Why does it need to be named in this way? Why does the information in there need to be there? Can I remove some of it? I, all of these questions don't seem to be answered anywhere inside of Obsidian documentation that I can find anywhere. So if you do have the answers or you do know where the answers are, can you link me and let me know, please? Because it's very frustrating having to do stuff but not know why I'm doing it. So I'm going to explain what I was trying to do, which required me to have a look at all these different files is basically you need to run. So I need to turn this TS file into a JS file. And you can see I've finally done it. I've managed to figure it out. Uh, and you, you do that by using the NPM run build. That's what I've been told to do. But unless I have certain files in there, it doesn't work. And I don't know why it doesn't work. And I don't know why I need the certain files, but I found them. I needed to copy the esbuild.config.mjs file, which has all of this information in. Uh, I say all of this. There's, there's a few bits of information. I assume this is telling the code what to look for, but I don't really know. I don't know what any of this means, uh, and I don't understand any of it, whereas I understood the other pages. Like when you actually look at the manifest, it's just saying exactly what it is. That's the idea. That's the name. That's the version, etc., etc. There's, there's nothing complicated in that. And in the package JSON, exactly the same. It just says what it is, the versions and the keywords and names and stuff. And I also needed this tsconfig.json. What any of this does again, I, I just don't know. And there's no explanation as to what it does, why I need it. And it's annoying having to put things in somewhere that I don't understand. And then the other file was the version bump MJS. And the other version file had literally just one line in it. So I didn't 
put that one in, I put this one in, and it worked. And again, I just don't know why. I have more questions than I do answers. But as you can see, this is the main TS file that I just did the copy and paste from over. And when I did the run build command, it says done in six milliseconds, uh, it created this for me. And this you're not meant to be able to read, which I understand because this is JavaScript. This is what the TypeScript looks like in JavaScript. So this is what Obsidian reads, but not necessarily what you want to read. I'm now going to type in npm run dev. And what that's done is basically said, okay, you're running development. So every time I make a change to the TS file, to the TypeScript file and save it, it automatically configures the JavaScript file as well. So if I come into the main TS file and then change sample plugin to my plugin and then save, you can see it started, changed, blah, blah, blah. And then it will have changed the JS and doing a quick control F so I can actually find the change. Uh, there it is. It says my plugin instead of sample plugin. This is a YouTube video, which I'll link in the description associated with creating your own plugin. I've watched this like six or seven times by now, and it's still confusing because it only goes over exactly how to make that plugin and doesn't answer a lot of the questions, the beginner questions that I have, which is why it's taken me so long to make this. I don't know how long the video is, but I mean, I must be working at this for like, I don't know, a week now, and I'm still struggling to get what I would class as the basics down because it seems like the instructions are intermediate focused. I don't know, maybe it's just me being really, really dumb. Hopefully this is helpful seeing a beginner going into developing this plugin because I'm I'm lost, I'm well out of my depth. So if you do have any questions, uh, I will try my best to answer them, but I'm kind of like fingers crossed other developers can be in the comment section below ask, answering uh, questions and answering my own questions as well. Uh, but yeah, this is episode one of extremely painful coding. <laughs>